Apple's studio display is very expensive, starting at 1600 US dollars. It's so expensive, in fact, that I now need to sell my cat just to afford it. Now, for that price, you do get a very solid monitor, but at the end of the day, it is just a monitor. Its main purpose is just to display an image on the screen, right? So what if instead you buy a monitor that is close to four times cheaper than a studio display, but still has all of the important features like a 27 inch panel, USB-C functionality and good colors. Enter the 27 inch 4K ultrafine monitor from LG, coming in at anywhere from 450 to 550 US dollars, depending on region, model, and any discounts. It's a fraction of the cost of the studio display. So how about we take a closer look at these two monitors and compare some of the differences. Also guys, just an FYI, we are celebrating almost hitting 200,000 subscribers on this channel. We're giving away an M1 MacBook Air, or if you already have an M1 MacBook Air or a Mac, or maybe you just wanna wait till the newer versions are released, we're gonna do a 1,000 US dollar gift card instead. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, obviously because you wanna get notified if you're the winner, and that is it. That's it, super easy, right? Anyway. Back to the video. Starting with build quality, there's absolutely no comparison here. The studio display is much better. The chassis is made entirely out of solid aluminium. The screen is glass with a glossy finish and the individual exhaust and speaker grills are precisely machined into the metal. Contrasted with the LG Ultrafine, it still looks pretty good compared to similar monitors on the market with a minimal color scheme, solid silver stand and the screen bezels are smaller than the studio display but it's made of plastic and you can really feel this when touching or moving the monitor. Another big win for the studio display is that its power supply is internal versus an external power brick for the LG. Now there are pros and cons to both. I mean, on one hand, the studio display is sleeker, more minimal, and it's also easier to cable manage without having that big bulky power brick. But on the other hand, if that power supply fails, it's internal and you can't easily replace it like you can on the LG. Also, the power cable cannot be removed on the studio display, but it can on the LG. So I'll leave the decision of what's more preferable up to you. Moving on to the stand, for the studio display, you get two options at the base $15.99 US dollar price point. The tilt adjustable stand or the Visa mount adapter. If you opt for the tilt adjustable stand, it's essentially useless with no adjustability apart from up and down, unless you pay $400 more to be able to raise it higher or lower. The LG does this much better, although can not be swiveled from side to side like many other monitors. Both of them have a Visa mount option, but I wish Apple just provided height adjustability out of the box on the base model studio display. There's no reason why that additional little chunk of metal should cost an extra 400 US dollars. Now, the connectivity options are decent on both screens. On the studio display, there's one upstream Thunderbolt 3 port with 96 watt charging and three downstream USB-C ports up to 10 gigabits per second for peripherals, storage, and networking. Although you can't daisy chain other monitors to the studio display, which might be a deal breaker to some, especially at this price point. And yes, the studio display does work with Windows, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now, on the LG, port selection is more varied, which is great for attaching accessories like a keyboard, mouse, or webcam, or even connecting two computers at once via the HDMI port. But there's no Thunderbolt, which probably isn't a massive deal for most, especially because on the studio display, there's only one Thunderbolt port anyway. Now, the USB-C charging on the LG can charge at 60 watts for the older models, or just like the studio display, 96 watts on the 2021 model, which is enough for all but the most power hungry of laptops. Quick side note here, I still think a dedicated desktop dock is a better option if you need any kind of serious connectivity. Neither of these monitors really offers a good selection, especially compared to something like the CalDigit TS3 Plus that I've been using for a while. I'll link that dock down below as well. Let's have a quick chat about some other features, starting with the speakers. Again, the studio display destroys the LG in this regard. The studio speakers sound great, the bass is really punchy, and the overall audio experience is very clean. 
Contrasted with the speakers on the LG, they're okay, but lack bass and they sound tinny in comparison. Here's an example. Now, the studio display also has a built-in webcam where the LG does not, but the quality of the webcam is average at best, despite the fact that it's accompanied with a built-in microphone array. The LG, of course, has neither of these things, so you'll have to go out and buy a separate webcam or just use the one on your laptop if you're happy with it. Moving on to controls, the studio display has no exterior buttons or menus. Everything is done through system preferences on your Mac. Now, I actually really enjoy this tight integration. I can easily switch between color profiles with a few clicks of a button, change brightness, or even change screen rotation, for example. Compared to the LG, it does give you more customizability and does have a really ergonomic control joystick, but the menu just feels clunky and outdated compared to the studio. Now, moving on to the display panel, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. Now, I'm just gonna straight up say it, the display panel on the studio display is much better. But the most important question to ask is, is it four times better than the cheaper LG display? If you watched my studio display review, you'd know that I was pretty critical of the panel Apple used. There's really nothing special about it, apart from the fact that the resolution is 5K. Now, a 5K resolution is great for Macs because it allows macOS to scale natively, whereas on a 4K monitor, this isn't possible and you can't scale apps properly and run into some minor quality loss and pixelation. This article from Ars Technica goes into more detail if you're interested. That being said, it is up to personal preference. For me personally, I can't really tell that much of a difference. It doesn't matter to me, but for other people, they definitely can tell a difference and they hate it. And this is especially relevant if they're doing any kind of design work. A 27 inch 5K panel has 218 PPI or pixels per inch versus 163 on a 27 inch 4K panel. So if you love that retina display on the MacBooks, the studio display is the only monitor that will come close. Brightness on both monitors is also pretty good with the studio display able to get noticeably brighter, but HDR is non-existent on the studio and average at best on the LG. Again, I go into detail on this in the individual reviews. Moving to colors, the LG covers the sRGB spectrum extremely well. I was able to get very good coverage with a delta E value under two. Apple mentions only DCI P3 gamut coverage on their website. So for the $1,600 Apple Studio that's marketed as being very color accurate, but has no local dimming tech like mini LED or QLED, no HDR, no true 10-bit colors, there's really not a huge difference between it and the LG. So although these monitors are aimed at different target markets and budgets, it was surprising to see that at the end of the day, many of the differences weren't quite as massive as I originally thought. And again, the biggest question you have to ask yourself is, are those differences worth four times more than a cheaper 4K monitor? For some people, absolutely, especially if you want that 5K resolution and the unrivaled design and build quality of the studio display. But for others, maybe not, and maybe you're just better off sticking with a cheaper 4K monitor or just bumping up your budget and getting the Pro Display XDR if you are a color professional. But yeah, a lot of pros and cons to both options. I think it really comes down to your budget more than anything, especially if your wallet is looking a little bit dusty after forking out a couple of thousand dollars for a new Mac, for example. But apart from that, hopefully this comparison video made it a little bit easier for you to decide and I'll catch you in the next one.